Welcome back to LNT, where every month we look into the world of classic literature to make it accessible and understandable for high school students who are non native English speakers. In this video, we'll be discussing Pamela or Virtue Rewarded, a novel written by Samuel Richardson during the Georgian era in England. To do so, we'll be exploring the historical and literary context of Pamela as well as the circumstances surrounding its publication that, as you know, caused a buzz in the 18th century. Then we'll examine the title and the genre. We'll take into account the structure of the novel, the characters, the settings, the narrative techniques and the themes. To describe the cultural context, we'll use this part of the general map that you can find on our website in the section How To. Let's get started with the historical context. Pamela or Virtue Rewarded was first published in 1740 by Samuel Richardson. The novel was written during a time of significant and social cultural change in England, including the rise of the middle class and the increasing importance of the novel as a literary genre. This time period that goes from 1714 to 1830 is known as the Georgian era. It was marked by the reigns of four King Georges, from George I to George IV. During this era, England experienced significant economic growth and expansion, and also the growth and expansion of the British Empire. Other important historical events of this time include the Seven Years' War and the Industrial Revolution. To attain a deeper understanding of the literary trend of the time, it's essential to consider the literary context of Pamela through the works of important authors like Daniel Defoe, uh, Jonathan Swift and Lawrence Stern. Daniel Defoe's works, such as Robinson Crusoe and Moll Flanders, were appreciated for their adventure and realistic storytelling. While Jonathan Swift's work, such as Gulliver's Travels and A Modest Proposal, were known for their satire and social commentary. Similarly, Tristram Shandy by Lawrence Stern was renowned for its experimental style and the blending of sentimentality, humor and philosophical reflection. Let's turn now our attention to the publication of Pamela. Imagine writing a book that caused such a stir that everyone was talking about it. That's exactly what happened when Pamela was first published. The author, Samuel Richardson, chose to publish it anonymously at first. When Pamela was first released, it caused a buzz. Some people loved it and praised its moral message, while others criticized it for portraying middle-class values as superior to upper-class values. When you're reading Pamela, you're not just reading one type of book, you're reading a combination of different genres. Let me explain. First of all, Pamela is an epistolary novel, which means that the story is told through a series of letters or diary entries. But Pamela is also a novel of manners. This means that the book focuses on the customs and behavior of a particular social group, the middle class in this case. It's like getting a glimpse into how people of that social class behaved and interacted with each other during the 18th century. Finally, we must say that Pamela has elements of a sentimental novel. This type of book emerged in the 18th century and emphasizes emotions and virtues of the heart, such as compassion, pity and sentimentality. Have you ever wondered what were the sources of inspiration behind the writing of Pamela? Richardson 
drew inspiration from many different sources. One of them was a manual on letter writing that he published in 1741 with a very long title, uh, like uh, a collection of the most familiar letters, familiar epistles and other pieces of that kind as are generally used in the several occasions of life. This manual was like a guide to letter writing and it provided examples of letters for different occasions and social situations and it was really popular among readers. It's a proof that of the growing importance of letter writing in 18th century society. But Richardson's inspiration didn't stop there. He based this novel on a true account of a maid who successfully resisted the inappropriate advances of her employer. A publication titled Memoirs of Lady H, the celebrated Pamela, states that the inspiration behind Richardson's Pamela was the real marriage of Hannah Sturgis, a coachman's daughter, to a baronet. The writing of Pamela was also influenced by other popular books and publications of the time, which emphasized the importance of virtue and morality in daily life. Now that we have explored the different genres and sources of inspiration that make Pamela a unique and exciting book, let's dive deeper into the specifics of the title, structure, plot and characters. From the cleverly chosen title, to the intricate structure of letters and diary entries, to the dynamic characters and their interactions, each element plays a crucial role in the narrative of Pamela. When you read the title Pamela or Virtue Rewarded, it might seem quite simple, but there's actually a lot more to it than meets the eye. Let me explain. First of all, the title Pamela is the main character's name, and it tells right away that the book is going to be about her. But the subtitle Virtue Rewarded is just as important. It tells that the book is going to be about how being a good person or having virtue pays off in the end. The novel follows the character of Pamela and her journey to maintain her virtue despite the advances of her employer Mr. B. Through her virtuous behaviour Pamela is able to elevate her status and eventually marry Mr. B. Let's turn to uh, the structure and plot. Pamela is composed of a series of letters and diary entries written by the protagonist Pamela Andrews. The novel begins with Pamela's reflections on her life as a servant in the household of Mr. B, a wealthy landowner. The plot follows Pamela's experiences as she resists Mr. B's attempts to seduce her and how she tries to maintain her virtue and chastity. Through her virtuous behaviour and determination to remain chaste, Pamela ultimately wins the love and respect of Mr. B and they marry. The novel may be divided into two parts. The first part deals with Mr. B's attempt to seduce Pamela and the second part deals with Pamela's eventual marriage to Mr. B and the challenges and rewards that come with it. The main characters of the novel are Pamela Andrews, a virtuous servant, and Mr. B, a wealthy landowner. Pamela is a strong-willed and virtuous young woman who is determined to maintain her chastity and virtue despite Mr. B's advances. Mr. B is a wealthy landowner who is initially driven by desire to seduce Pamela but later comes to respect and love her for her virtue. Other characters include Pamela's parents and Mr. B's family and servants. These characters provide a contrast to the main characters and also serve as a representation of the social norms of the time. 
The settings in the novel reflect the social norms and the values of that time period as well, but Richardson provides few details about the exact time. Nevertheless, the readers get a good sense of 18th century England because the novel provides detailed descriptions of the interiors of the houses. As for the setting in place, the novel is set primarily in the country estate of Mr. B, which serves as a symbol for the wealth and power of the upper class. The estate is described in detail and as opulent. Additionally, the novel also includes scenes in London, which serve as a contrast to the luxurious setting of the estate and to highlight the differences in social class. The novel also includes scenes in Pamela's hometown, which serve as a reminder of our humble origins. The summer estate owned by Mr. B is also mentioned in the novel. It serves as a location for one of the crucial episodes of the novel where Mr. B tries to seduce Pamela. Let's examine the different narrative techniques used in the novel. The novel is written in the first person point of view with Pamela as the narrator. This point of view allows readers to experience events through Pamela's eyes and to gain insight into her thoughts and feelings. Richardson employs a variety of narrative techniques, including letter writing and diary entries to convey the story. The use of these techniques emphasizes the theme of virtue by allowing the reader to experience Pamela's inner thoughts and feelings, as we already said. In addition to the use of letters and diary entries, Richardson uses other narrative techniques. One such technique is the use of interruptions and digressions in the letters, which serves to create a sense of immediacy and realism. For example, Pamela writes in one of her letters, I am interrupted and must defer the rest till tomorrow. This technique creates the impression that the letters are being written in real time. Furthermore, Richardson also uses rhetorical devices such as rhetorical questions, exclamations and exclamatory sentences. They express the emotions of the characters and they create a sense of immediacy and realism. For example, Pamela writes, Oh, what a cruel hand is this! Why did you not kill me at once instead of thus tormenting me? Let's end up this presentation with the themes. The main themes of the novel include virtue and morality and social class. The novel presents a strong emphasis on the importance of virtue, particularly in the character of Pamela, who represents the, the ideal of uh, virtuous womanhood. In this regard, we can see that the novel includes the letter P, like in Pamela's name, which can symbolize her purity. The letter P is also repeated throughout the novel in the form of initials and signatures, as if it was a reminder of Pamela's virtuous character. The novel also explores the differences between the upper and lower classes and the social norms and value of 18th century England. Pamela was considered a revolutionary novel in its time as it portrayed the values and aspirations of the rising middle class in contrast to the traditional values of the upper class. The novel's depiction of a virtuous servant who wins the love and respect of a wealthy landowner was seen as scandalous by some as it challenged the traditions. The novel's emphasis on the virtues of hard work, determination and self-reliance, as well as its portrayal of a virtuous heroine who rises above her social class, 
were seen as a direct challenge to the traditional values of the upper class. This caused some controversy and generated debates among critics and readers about the social norms and the values of the time. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for joining me for this presentation on Samuel Richardson's novel, Pamela of Virtue Rewarded. I hope you now have a better understanding of this work and the themes it explores. If you'd like to learn more about classic novels, be sure to visit www.literaturenotrouble.com where you'll find in-depth information and analysis. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel for more presentations on great works of literature. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.